What up, everybody? It's Pastor G. It's Lady T. It's Monday, too. We're excited about Monday. Monday. It's Monday. It's a great day to be alive. Uh, it's a great day to be alive. I thought you were trying to show me something. Mm -mm. Oh, okay. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Thank you guys for coming in today. We are uh, very, uh, very excited about God's opportunity, about who God is to us. And uh, man, I, I need you to be excited. I need you to have uh, excitement in your expectation. I believe that, that this is the time that you're entering into your best life, best life ever, best life, best life ever. When I, when I was uh, declared at, at, at church, I always say, I hope your life is good. Because if your life is good and you declare that it's going to be my best life ever, you are actually saying the life that I live is good is going to be even better. And I want I want this to be your best time in life. And everything starts with um, uh, you declaring the goodness of God in your current life. Mm -hmm. You got to declare that God is good. I was thinking about the sovereignty of God. And who God is, and I'm dropping this, and we're gonna get right into uplift today. And I need to, I need to encourage you. Uh, there's something that you got as sovereign. And it's called your mouth. Mm. <laughs> That's powerful. Ain't it? Your mouth is the sovereign piece that you have, meaning that with your mouth you have the power to do some God things, to declare some God things, and then you watch how God bring them to pass just because you declared it out of the sovereignty, which is your mouth, which is uh, only, only, only actually uh, declaring what scripture says. Death and life is here. It's in your tongue. So thank you very much today for miss being here. Miss you yesterday, Pam. <clears throat> yeah, miss you yesterday, Pam. Uh, I already told, uh, 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 let's see, let's see. I told her that we missed her. Okay. So you can second that emotion. Yeah, she is second that emotion. Thank you, Pam, for being in the house. Jonathan, uh, Sonia, Keisha Wilson, uh, Terry T, uh, <laughs> Pam, of course, Jonathan. Oh, there's Jonathan again. Uh, Pastor Stevie Robinson, what's up, man? What's up, man? Blessings to you. Blessings to you. Rapunzel Brown, blessings. Blessings, blessings. Terry T has been jumping in here. She Look at her. You see her right there. Mm -hmm. Lady T, bless you, Pastor T, Terry T. And uh, Facebook, we want to we want to say thank you to um, yeah. for your um, commitment to help us to yeah. raise funds for Jonathan for Nathan this yeah. month of February. Yes, um, the family has said that they are you know very thankful. Yes, she said that this has made them be able to connect with people that they didn't even that they don't know that they didn't know would even be able to help or whatever. So so it's like. That, you know, it's a good thing. So keep giving, keep yeah. giving, keep giving. Right. The month of February, we're trying to raise the whole, the the total amount that it will be for him for his six months therapy. Yeah. So, Seventeen thousand dollars. I need you to come through, people. Yeah. It's a blessing to be a blessing. <laughs> God will bless you in return. No gift too small, and definitely no gift is too large. Now we're going to put the address again into uh, this uplift so that you guys can go there. Come on, come through, come through. I'm excited about that. No family should ever have to neglect the care of their child because of financial deficiencies. Please, no child should ever, no no parent should ever. So we want to, Uplift is going to be about blessing people uh, that are, are going through a moment. And remember, we, we declare these are only moments in life. God is going to declare your best life ever. And he's, he's going to allow your best life ever at your level of speaking it out of your mouth. So please be conscious to speak it out of your mouth always because it's important that you authorize God's uh, intervention in your life by your mouth. That's the way that God. And I keep saying these things because I need you to pay attention to this. I need you to not uh, uh, casually engage your God. Don't casually. This this means everything to God. While sometimes we are so casual in our approach to him because we've heard it, we've seen it, we've done it. Oh, here we go again. No, this is real. Everything that you see and experience in your life is going to be as a consequence of your speaking. 
It's important that you get back to, to honoring what God wants, and that's your mouth. He wants your mouth to become captive to his will so that your mouth can speak his will. Thank you, Cassandra Bones. Thank you so much again. Thank you, Rapunzel. Uh, again, uh, James Warford. Thank you so much for being in the house. Tori Delaney. What's up, Tori? Thank you for being in the house. Deja Johns, Kim Montgomery, Jackie Dyer, Pastor uh, Gilbert Johns and get uh, a DJ bless us to y'all. My mom is traveling, but she's in now Von Atkinson. Now let's get to this uplift. Let's get to this uplift. Let's get to this uplift. Now we are the pastors of Network of Believers, eleven eleven West Seventh Street, downtown Little Rock, Arkansas. We are excited about our ordination as pastors of Network of uh, <laughs> Believers. Now we're not here to even try to be popular at all. Who cares? about being popular. We just want to do what God has commissioned us to do. That's the most important thing in our lives right now. Uh, uh, you know, when sometimes when things are presented to me that people say this will give you the spotlight, you know how I am. I'm usually like, okay, okay. It's not about spotlight for me. It's about me being obedient to what God is saying and what God is doing. I want to be effective. I don't want to be popular. Popular, I mean, if you are uh, popular because of your effectiveness, then I guess I can accept that. But just being popular and ineffective, just people see my face and know my name. I lived that life 30 years. Mm. I was on the scene, you know, I was on the scene 30 years with every uh, uh, attitude and every ego that you could imagine. I was there. And I, I grew to say, hmm, I refrain from that life because I want to be in the will of God. That's all. That's all. Now, here's something that is very important. We're living in a crucial time. God has given us uplift to be inspiring. But in these last few uplifts, he's given us a mandate to be to give some instruction. Because here's what I believe, and I strongly believe this, and, and, and my spirit keeps leaping when I think of the idea. There's something that God is ushering his people into right now. And there is a possibility that some might not make it in. Let us therefore fear that a rest being left, some don't actually come to the rest. And this is very important because we think that it automatically happens just at us being in existence. Mm -hmm. Now, you can be in existence and never be uh, that all that God has called you to be. I believe that in this particular time in our life, now this might be way over some head and they, they, they might think that oh, this stuff don't even, what is his and all this, but I believe that we, we serve a living God. I, I believe that he's alive and he's well. I believe that this is the season that he's going to show his greatest moment through the people that can believe and lock into his instruction. So lunchtime uplift was given to us to be an uplift, but God in these last few have been uh, very urgently uh, telling us that we should give instruction about what he's about to do yes. because God does nothing in the earth as Amos 3, 7 says, unless he first notify his prophets. Now, and that particular text has been used as a uh, way to promote a ministry and saying that I'm so close to God, he never does anything unless he tells me. But that's not the context. Mm -hmm. Here's the context of the text. Uh, there was a people called Israel that was complaining because they were experiencing something and they said they had no prior knowledge or it just happened to us and we didn't know that it was coming. And so God rebutted the idea or the thought by saying, I've never done anything. I've never issued, I never acted unless I have first given the warning or given the uh, 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 the declaration that I am on my way. And so here we are right now at the same position. There's a move of God that's coming right now. And God is saying, speak it now so that the people can be aware that I'm coming. Now, when when it, when Ezekiel gets the call from God, Ezekiel chapter two, and uh, God is saying, I need you to go speak a word to the people. Now, Ezekiel is saying to God, you know, <clears throat> I know what you want me to say, but I'm going to declare something to people that's not trying to hear. And he says it doesn't matter if they hear. Now, I want to speak this to those of you that has been given a mandate from God to speak something, even in, in the atmosphere that seems like 
it is not even interested in what God is trying to say. We got a way we want to work and we want to do, and that's what we're going to do. God tells Ezekiel, speak it. He says, I know that you're speaking to a people that probably don't want to hear. They are doing life and they're doing it their own way, but they will know that there has been a prophet in their midst. They won't have an excuse and say, I did not know. I have not heard. And so we are right here at this, at this juncture in our lives, in the, in, 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 in the world right now, when God is speaking, we have been living a merciful life because God could not do anything unless he first spoke it into the ears so that when he began to move and begin to act, we cannot say we had no idea. And so this is the season that I believe. Now, this is not a warning about the wrath. Don't miss this because every time we hear the instruction of God, we think that it's a moment that God is talking about he's mad and he's about to bring wrath on the life of his people. No, yeah. what he's saying is I'm about to move and you, because you are not moving, might not experience the fullness of what I'm trying to get into your life. Now, that's a tragedy for it to be available and you never experience it. It be available and you never experience it. So now we speak because the enemy is very cunning in his attempt right now in this very volatile season. We are living in a very volatile time. We're living in a very volatile time. And this is why the people of God, the people that know that God have got to wake up and understand that we are, the enemy is trying to push an agenda that is going to cause the people of God to sabotage the promise on their life. There's only one way to sabotage the promises of God on your life. And that's you acting out of character from God. Yeah. You have the image of God on your life yeah. and God is only doing for himself. Please hear this. God is only acting. He gives me a body to, 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 to live out my spiritual or God life. He breathed into my nostril the breath of life. So he gave me a body so that I can operate in the air, earth in dominion to carry out his own plan. Yeah. I'm not a body having a spiritual experience. I'm God that's inside a body that's about to do incredible things. And so this, this is the moment that we've got to walk in to the knowledge of God and be very aware. It's going to be difficult because there's so much confusion. And I want to highlight that today. And I'm going to move very fast, fast, swiftly, because there's things I got to say. There's so many things I got to say. Thank you, Katrina Robinson, Mashana Cooney, uh, Raina, what's up? Uh, Bishop Cedric Beer, what's up, man? And Henrietta, love you. Vaughn Atkinson, love you guys. Here we go. Shalanda, thank you so much, Minhouse. Now, I, I call this uplift. This is very important. Because God is going to bring clarity. Because we've heard so many things that allow us to form our own opinion, or we have changed the God direction on the thing and implanted our own how we feel about it. Mm -hmm. And this is very important. This is very important. One of the things that you see in God act when you see a swift move of God is when you read in Judges, uh, when it says, every man went about to do what was right in his own sight. Mm -hmm. meaning I know what I want to do and I declare what I want to do in my own judgment, the right thing to do without ever kind of trying to come to continuity and find out what is God saying on this situation? Mm -hmm. I'm just going to do me. <clears throat> and when you do you, <laughs> you have to clean up the mess that you made. Mm -hmm. That's what, that's what happens when you do you out of, out of, out of, out of blatant um, disregard to God's instruction, then you have to clean up. I am not capable of creating life. Mm -hmm. I don't even want to think I am. So I need to follow an instruction from an incredible God that has all knowledge. So I can live the life at the level of God. Now, here it is. We're living in a very volatile time. Stay with me. Please, my brothers and sisters, I, I, if you will, go and share this video. Share this video. This is going to be a very informative video today. I believe that God is going to say something very strategic, very specific, and it's going to allow you to walk into a wealthy place. It's by instruction. It's by instruction only. This is God. If I can just get to the place where I follow God's instruction for my life, uh, it, it, Jesus says in, in Revelation uh, uh, that he, after he's giving each church the reprimand and the uplift, he says, to them that are able to overcome, will I give the power or the ability to set in my throne? In other words, I'm going to give you uh, the instruction, uh, uh, but it's going to be up to you to gravitate or follow the instruction. Mm -hmm. And if you follow, you will overcome, and then you will get what is promised behind. 
stay with me. If you follow, if to them that overcome, mm-hmm. if you can hear and be able to come to the place where you are focused on what God says in spite of what society is saying, you're going to have the power to sit. Mm. in the place of dominion. So that's very important that you hear this. Thank you, Pastor Nolan. Watch this now. Here we go. Jessica Mm. Edwards and James Epson. Here we go. Don't Mm. allow, here's the name of this uplift. Share it, share it, share it, share it, share it. You cannot share this enough. I wish more pastors and and, and evangelists and apostles and all that were in the house because this is going to be very important because we can build something in doctrine that totally defied God's idea and not even know it. Mm. This has been the plight. This has been the plight. A, a religion, a doctoral understanding can change exact everything that God has said. And because of custom and tradition, each 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 dispensation will take something away or add something to. And so what God had, had wanted in his original design, we can be totally away from it and not ever know it because slowly but surely the Satan has sifted us as wheat. And it happens. We don't know. It's not that we intended to be out of order. We just heard what somebody told us, and then we pass it down. I heard they tell me, and then eventually I find myself, I have concocted something that don't even look like what God originally said. And I think that's part of our greatest dilemma is we don't, our heart is not intended to do the wrong thing. It's just that the information has been so messed up. And now we're in a place where what we are supposed to win by default is plundering us. And we're wondering, God, what is happening? Now, one of the things that in this very tumultuous, very difficult season that we're living in is a word called strife. Stay with me here because this is important. If you haven't shared, go share. Thank you, Regina, strength of God, grace. Share this. Thank you so much, Kimberly. Hey, share this. Now, watch this. Here's what is important. Don't allow strife to rule your life. Don't allow strife to rule your life. Now, that's a simple statement, Mm -hmm. but it is so important that you understand what strife is. And we might discover that my life is consumed with strife. Mm -hmm. We might discover that your life is consumed with strife. Now, here's the meaning of the definition of strife. This is very important. It says violent or angry disagreement. Check your record. Check your record. Violent or angry disagreement. Uh, uh, Angry disagreement of violent actions. Check your record. Check your record. Check your record. Uh, Number three says disagreement between groups of people. Check your record. Check your record. Check your record. Don't let strife use a rule your life. Now, when I read this, uh, definition, I start doing examination of my life and discovered that I was perhaps guilty. Well, okay, okay, I don't want to call you guilty because you might not uh, receive that. Uh, uh, a victim of at least a couple of them, let's say it like that, so that we can uh, uh, apply this word. Because we are so, we're so right now, we are so uh, <clears throat> well to do that when people say stuff, we don't we don't follow the instruction anymore because who they think? They don't know who they talking to. Well, don't let strife Rule your life. Now, definition strife is violent or angry disagreement. Now, this doesn't have to be outside your house. This could be right inside your house. This could be with the one that you're sitting or uh, or laying beside. Yeah. It could very well be. Now, angry disagreement or violent action. This could be somebody outside your house or it could be inside your house. Now, here's the one that I really want to bring emphasis to. Disagreements between groups of people. Now, be very careful. Be very careful. Don't let strife rule your life. Now, watch this. Watch this. Here's the important thing. We know that the images that we're seeing on TV and on social media and other places that we receive our information, admittedly so, (laughs) it's kind of hard to feel, not to feel some kind of way or feel like uh, they done me wrong and I'm going to have revenge on those that are guilty. We are being pushed into something right now through social media, through TV. It's a very volatile time. This is a very confusing and difficult season that we're living in. And, 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 and the enemy has got the nerve. Let me tell you what he's got the nerve to do. He's got the nerve to push this agenda at his greatest boiling point and then drop it right in the middle of Black History Month. And, and con artists. Drop it in the middle of Black History Month. He's putting all these images of things that happen, of things that are currently happening. 
and he put it in the middle of Black History Month. Now, let me re restate the uh, title to this video. Don't let strife rule your life. Don't let the images that you see, don't let what is happening in the world today cause you to feel some kind of way and you accept it that it's 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 my right to feel this. It's my it's my right to feel some kind of way right now. And you be, feel kind of uh, uh, vindictive in your heart because the enemy, when he brings this, he'll start highlighting things that perhaps you didn't think about because of the sensitivity of the time. He starts showing you things. Hmm. Oh, I see what they were trying to do when they done that. Be very careful that strife don't rule your life. Don't fall into this trap. Stay with me. If you haven't shared me, go share me. But because <laughs> this gets interesting, why are you saying this, Pastor G? Because the enemy is very deceptive. You won't even know it. You, I'm, I'm not just talking about you. I'm talking about all of us. You hear it across the pulpits of America right now. There are messages of strife mm. in a good way, causing people to go to their jobs and look and to single out or to be very conscious of something somebody done so that they can have a right to retaliate. I just, I'm just looking for the right moment. I wish they would. <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly that's called strife ruling your life. Now, the reason why I say that this is a trap, this is a trap, this is a trap, because I believe right now, right now, we're on the verge of the greatest move, an incredible move of God. I believe this with everything I have to believe. Every uh, indicator inside me is indicating that there's something that is about to spill over from out of the blessings of God into the life of the believers that will follow God's direction. This is going to be a great time for you. The enemy knows this. And when the enemy has got a definite word from the Lord, he turns up things in your life. He makes things incredible difficult. He makes he knows exactly what buttons to push to cause you to get in a position where you are most unlike God. And one of the ways is called the word strife. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. God is, God is about to produce great blessings for his people that can believe. Watch what I tell you. This is the season that is going to happen. The enemy knows it. He has clear. He clearly knows that this right here is the time. I was preaching on yesterday at Network of Believers, and I was feeling, I gave my testimony that the last few days I've been feeling anxiety. I don't know where it comes from or what it's all about because there was nothing I felt like I was urgently out of line with. Uh, uh, most of the time we get uh, anxiety over finances. I wasn't having that. And so I was really questioning God, why am I feeling like this? And he told me this very clear and definitively. He says, this is what is called shift anxiety. Shift Anxiety. What is shift anxiety? Meaning God is shifting you into a greater level in him, but right now your flesh don't want to go. There are some things that you want to do when God says it's time to shift. And when it's time to shift, he challenges us to let go of things that are pleasing to our flesh. And he's shifting you right now. And so you are having this anxiety moments and you want to blame it on this, that, and the other. But it's the fact that God is saying something that is contrary to what is happening around you. Shift anxiety. So I got to be very careful that in this season of incredible exponential acceleration, I don't let the enemy deceive me out of God's moment. Listen to me. Unforgiveness is the sabotager of all dreams. Say it again. Unforgiveness mm. will sabotage your dream. Unforgiveness will sabotage your dream. You need to hear me. Yeah. Unforgiveness will sabotage your dream. This is the only thing that will prevent the blessings of God are coming into your space. Now you can say it's going to happen if God got it for me, it's for me. 
Well, if you believe that, you wouldn't have all the anxiety nights over if it's going to come or not. Now, you say that on one hand, but on the other hand, you uh, can't sleep because I don't know if it's going to happen. So uh, we don't want to play any games. Yeah. We want to be truthful now. That's, that's what we want. We want truth more than anything else. Now, watch this. Watch this. Unforgiveness. For whatever reason, for whatever they done, now everybody ain't gonna be able to go with this. I, I get it. I get it. You you some some gonna say, listen, Pastor, I know what you're saying, but listen, they come for me, I'm coming for them. <laughs> well, wait, I mean, you have that right. You have a right. You have that right to say that. You have your right to live according to that law. That's your right. I'm not trying to to to, to debate you about that. But I'm gonna say to the rest of you that know that there's a blessing that God has promised you. And you feel it right now. You have a shift anxiety in your life because you know it be, you know it's it, it is an incredibly large, but everything around you don't look like love, don't suggest it. Mm -hmm. Don't let unforgiveness come because it's the only thing that can sabotage what God is trying to get. Why? Because when I'm living in unforgiveness, I am living at the point that I am most unlike. The scripture says that he has put his image on me. He's put himself on me. When he puts himself on me, there's a life that he desires me to live that is in direct order with what he represents. Yeah. Unforgiveness yeah. is the very thing that, 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 that will put you or, or make you deny the image that you wear. Mm. Because the first thing about God we know as sinners is his forgiving power when i was a wretch undone or whatever the cliches or whatever you want to say we know that we came to him and he says to us i have forgiven you i look beyond yes. all of the things that you've done and i forgave and so when i say that i'm gonna live a life of unforgiveness no matter what the circumstance or reason are i'm saying that i don't desire to wear the image of god and so God is only doing for himself. He's just using this flesh to make it happen. And the very day I say I can't forgive, it's the very day I say I walk out on what God is trying to do for him. Yes. We got to be very sensitive and we got to stay on focus. Now, listen to me very carefully. Listen, listen, listen to me very carefully. Unforgiveness is a matter of the heart. A lot of people is not going to understand this. Uh, when you have forgiven somebody, there's people that I have forgiven, and they think that I haven't because I don't call them today, or uh, because I'm not around. You can love without lingering. Please hear this. That doesn't mean that when I forgive a person, now we got to be talking every day. That's not true. That's not true. You just make sure your heart is correct. Some of you in this season of your life, because you're so focused on what your calling and mandate is, there's a lot of things that you thought was good, God is going to require you to let go of. Because it causes you to lose your focus. It causes you to be in an uproar. Because you're trying to do something that perhaps it was just a good thing. All good things are not God things. And so in your forgiving season, it doesn't mean that you're going to have to stay. You can love without lingering. It's, it's just the way it is. But you just make sure that your heart is correct before God. So unforgiveness is the sabotager of all dreams. This has happened to somebody. This might not be as deep as you want it to be, but it's an instruction that I believe that well, so many times we're expecting people to tell us something that God has already said several times. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I haven't walked fully into what God has said is because I won't commit to his due order. Mm. There's nothing that someone can say to you that's going to exempt you from following God's instruction. And if they have told you that, stop listening to them. You're going to have to follow an instruction. God only gives you a glimpse of the possibilities. Then he says, now here's the instruction. That will allow you to walk in to your potential. That's all prophecy is. It's giving you the possibilities or the potential of a thing. Now he gives you instruction. First step, he goes back and says, now here's the instruction to get to the wealthy place I just promised. All right. And that's what we're going to have to follow. But unforgiveness, if there's unforgiveness in your heart, forget it. Yes. If there is unforgiveness, forget it. It ain't happening for you. God is not changing. He's not going to put his blessings on something that can't not forgive. No matter what reason, no matter how good your reasons, your reasoning is, 
He's not going to allow that. So right now, listen to me. We are at a crossroad. Mm -hmm. We are at a crossroad right now. You are seeing it. Now, some people are going to deny they're not listening, but mm -hmm. that's okay. I'm going to say it anyway. We are at a crossroad. We will either believe our political views, our social views from our community, or we're going to believe God's word. It's not going to be a question. Either you're going to go with political views. We're seeing that happen. We thought that we were closer than what we actually are because of a, a political view is split. Even amongst the, the, the Christian community, it's split. Yeah. Now, here's, here's, here's us. Either we're going to go with that, our social views, our, our community views. We got a view inside our own community that tells us that there's an enemy and we got to hate them mm. because of what they've done. Now, listen to me. Either you're going to go with your political views, you're going to get caught up into political views, you're going to get caught up into social views, your community views, or you are going to believe the word of God. Now, I know that might not mean much to because now uh, God spoke to me this past weekend and he says, now I am only a fragment of who I really am in the mind of my so-called believers because of what they've heard, because of what they've seen, and because of what they are experiencing right now, they don't even know who I am. And so now they are going with political views, they're going with social community views over my word because I have only been introduced as a secondary, third, or fourth uh, uh, clause in their lifestyle. That's where we come. And so now we're at a definite crossroad in our lives. Either we're going to believe the word of God or we're going to go with our political view or our community view. It's going to be very difficult for us to transcend my community view after social media and TV and all of those things has given us the horrific pictures of what happened to us and the reasons why we should be mad at everybody because of what happened to us. This is going to be a crossroad that is going to be very difficult to cross. But here is the question. Whose report will you believe? Whose report are you going to believe? Now, it's going to be difficult because you're going to have very popular people, popular pastors, popular prophets, popular everything saying that now is the season for you mm -hmm. to have the right to feel like vengeance should be yours. When the Bible clearly says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. You are going to have to fight through the political, the social, the community, the, the perhaps sometimes even your doctoral views to see what God has said. Now, I want to I wanna bring some scripture in because I believe that this is the season that God has issued the greatest blessing or the greatest manifestation of his, his desire, I say, uh, of his time right now. And I believe that the only thing that can sabotage this move is strife. If we fall into strife, we fall into unforgiveness. And I'm, I declare to you today that the enemy of your promise of your walking into your wealthy place is going to give you a great reason to defy the word of God because he's already been deteriorating the belief system through angry people that was angry because of everything. This is why the Bible says it's spiritually discerned. What does that mean, Pastor G? You better have the right spirit when you enter in because because if you don't have the right spirit when you go into scripture, you're going to find scripture that support your dysfunction. And you're going to preach it to people and you're going to be very articulate in your preaching that it convinces them to feel the way that you feel. Stay with me now because the scripture has always been used to produce issues in communities. We know that as a, uh, uh, a, a black race, that, that scripture was used to, to introduce issues into our community. That does not mean that scripture is wrong. It means that the person that was teaching it to you wrong had an ideal and he used it to your disadvantage. This is why I must get a definite grasp on God's word and what he's doing to me. God never told me in the word that I was inferior to anybody. So for those of you that said the Bible or the scripture has, has created this mindset that we should be inferior, you don't know the scripture. Perhaps you should go once again and read it. I am more than a conqueror. Yeah. I am the love of God. So here's the crossroad. We're going to believe politically or we're going to believe what God has said about it. I would strongly suggest, I would strongly suggest that you believe the word of God. 
in spite of what popularity is declaring, despite of what you're seeing on TV, in spite of what the images are on social media, I declare, I would suggest that you believe what God is saying. We are in for the greatest move of God. The enemy is trying to bring something in. The only thing that can sabotage this move is unforgiveness. How do I get to the place of unforgiveness? I get to the place of strife. How do I get to the place of strife? When I see the images and I heard the stories, they bring me to strife, which lead to unforgiveness, which eventually lead to me sabotaging what the word of God is saying about me. I refuse to be left out in this season. I don't care what the reason is. I don't want to be left out in this season. So I don't care what the pictures are. I don't care how many times you show me a picture. That's not my reality. I'm going to say it again. You can show me pictures and you can tell me I should be mad. That's not my reality. Your enemy is not going to be my enemy. I'm going to say it again. Your enemy is not going to be my enemy because the scripture declares to me, and we're going to have to believe the scripture or we're going to believe our political, our social views, but the scripture says he's going to make my enemy my footstool. And so the enemy perhaps that you had, I'm not going to deem him my enemy that by default because what may have destroyed you is going to become my stepping stone because I believe the word of God. Amen and amen. Matthew, the fifth chapter, I want to speak some scripture because perhaps you have a right and a reason right now to be upset with somebody because you've seen or you heard or the enemy has caused something to come up in your spirit that you've been watching. Perhaps that's been the case, but I want to show you something that the scripture said for those of us that still believe that the scripture is true. Sometimes that's up to question for questioning. Amen. Now here it is, Matthew 5, 44. Here's what Jesus said. It's written in red, so it's declared by Jesus. In case, uh, 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 I believe the scripture is true. Let me read it to you. It says, but I say unto you, here's Jesus saying, but I say unto you, love your enemies. Somebody's cringing right there. Love your enemies. Don't love your friends. I am telling you to love your family. That's good. You're going to do that anyway, hopefully. Love your enemies. Some people don't like this. I don't, I'm not loving them. I don't have, well, um, here again, here again, I'm speaking what the scripture says. For those of you that still believe scripture, I believe it's God's word. I believe it has power. I'm believing it. So here's Jesus saying, I believe him. But I say unto you, love your enemy. Watch this. He pushes it. He says, bless them that curse you. Bless them that curse you. Watch this. Bless them that curse you, no matter what color they are. All of your cursings is not coming from another color. But you still are to bless them that curse you. Watch this. Do good to them that hate you. Everybody that hates you ain't of another color. So he said do good to them. He didn't say do good to a certain ethnicity. He says do good to them that hate you. Watch this. And pray for them which despitefully use you. Your prayer order from Jesus is to find people that despitefully misuse you. I don't care who they are. I don't care what their background is. Your prayer focus, your intercessory focus should be on them that you know despise you or despitefully use you. Here's why we, we are at a, a very difficult crossroad for people that get bad at people that go talk to people that they know is an enemy. The Bible clearly says those are the ones that you should be in the front of talking to, praying for. In accessory rule is that first we pray for those that are in leadership. I don't care what their view is. If you believe the God that you say you believe in, you believe that the God that you say that you believe in got the power to do anything, why don't you pray that God change? Crickets. Crickets. Because we think that we have the right to divide the, the scripture and the word of God. I'm scared of you. Here it is. Uh, pray for them which despitefully use you. Now, if you're trying to go for popularity in this season, these are probably not scriptures you're going to read because you need to, we need to truth to a rule and not popularity. If people leave you because you tell the truth, then perhaps you never needed them in your space anyway. Stay with me because there's more. Now, watch the end of this. He says, he says, pray for them which despitefully use you. Now, the name of this uplift is don't let strife rule your life. Watch this. Uh, pray for them despitefully and persecute. Pray for them that despitefully use you. They, there was a situation and they use you on the situation. And now it says, 
even those that persecute you, meaning it's an ongoing thing. Pray for them. Pray to, pray to the God that you say you believe in that's got the power to change. Pray for them that he changes the situation. It didn't say pray that he kill them. Because you don't need your enemies around because he's going to prepare a table before you in the presence of the enemy. For those of you that's trying to get rid of your enemy, you're actually saying, I want to get rid of the table. Because my blessing is going to show up. As a matter of fact, there's an enemy that's going to be the instigator of your blessing. God has raised up an enemy to bless you when you can see things through the eyes of God and not through the eyes of your political view or your social or community view. Say that again. If you can see God in spite, of what the people are constantly uh, uh, breathing, uh, speaking into your ears, you're going to see a divine intervention like never before. We're on the uh, at the door of it right now. And the enemy is trying his best to make us sabotage. The only thing that can stop it is the condition of your heart. Now, watch this. Here's what is even more interesting. After Jesus says, pray for them that despitefully use you. Pray for them that persecute you. Pray for them that hate you. Pray for your enemy. Now, watch what he says. He pushes this for all you children of God that think that you got a reason, a good reason not to follow scripture. The 45th verse, watch what it says. It says, that you may be the children of your father, which is in heaven. This is a sign. This is an agreement from God that you are his child. <laughs> Listen, I, it could not have been written any plainer. Watch this. It says, it says, it says, at the end, pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. Notice what it said, that ye may be children of your father, which is in heaven. So if you can't do the 45th verse, don't think you are the 45th. Uh, uh, 44th verse, it's going to be impossible for you to be called a child of God. You might be called something, but it's going to be very difficult for you to be walking in the due order of children of God if you can. Now, Jesus says this, if you love me, you're going to do what I say. You're going to do my commandment. He's just given us a very difficult commandment, and I think it's very proper for him to shift it or to, to expose it or to highlight it again in this very volatile very difficult time that we live in. There is a righteousness that is going to take away your right. And let me explain. There's a righteousness that's going to come up that, that the scripture suggests that's going to take away your right when you feel like you got the right to retaliate on everybody because of what they've done. This does not make you weak, my brothers and sisters. This makes you obedient. This does not make you weak, my brothers and sisters. This make you obedient. And if you are willing and obedient, the scripture says that you will eat the good of the land. In other words, your obedience will allow you to eat the good of the land. For those that are working real hard, struggling, trying to come up, he says, if you obey my word, you will get what you've been struggling years to get, and I will give it to you. Because now he's dropping it in this very volatile time. He's saying this in spite of what everything, God's word has always been the, 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 the defiant uh, uh, voice in the midst of what culture is suggesting. It has always been that. Now, watch this. Watch this. <clears throat> now, I already know this is not sitting well with a lot. I know. I know. It's not. It's not. It's not what you heard. It's not what you desire. It's not what you believe, but the word of God is true. Either I'm going to believe what scripture says, or I'm going to go about to make my own way. <clears throat> I have got to abide by it. The word of God is true. I have got to abide by it or, or not. Either I'm going to do it or I'm not. And I can't do it when I think it's convenient for me. I've got to do it in those times when I would rather be doing something else because now, uh, after this, I think I should be doing it. That's when God challenges us the most to stay focused. Now, watch this. Don't let strife rule your life. I just gave you an order. Now, here's the important thing that strife does. Watch this. Confusion. Confusion. Somebody, if you see, if you if you are hearing this, write that word in. Con. Fusion, 
confusion. I want to read something because this is going to paint a very vivid picture and we're going to see some parallels right now. Confusion. Here's a word. Don't let strife rule your life. James, the third chapter, verse number 16. James 3, verse number 16. I'm reading from the King James Version. Watch this. It says, for where envy and strife is, where envy and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. The, uh, listen to the Bible. Where, watch this, where, for where envy and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. Watch this, watch this. If there is always confusion in a community or organization, if there is always confusion in a community, in a certain ethnic group, if there's always confusion, here's why it is. It's because strife is allowed as a norm. If there is confusion, because James just said, Scripture just says, wherever uh, strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. If there is continual uh, confusion in a community, in a group of people, it's because strife is taught as a norm. Now, let's go back and let's get the definition of strife again. Here it is. Strife is violent or angry disagreement. Angry disagreement or violent actions. Disagreement between groups of people. Now, if there is always confusion in a community, it's because strife is taught as a norm. Now, here's what I got to understand. This is very important. This is very pivotal. For those of you that have been promised something from God, you're going to have to find a way to transcend the belief that instigates strife and tell you you got a right. Being humble does not make you weak. It says that there are things that I will relinquish my power to the greater power, which is God. He says vengeance is his, not yours. And if I trust this almighty God, he will avenge me of everything. I let him take care of my problem. Now, this is difficult because I know you are a problem solver. You are a problem solver. But where confusion is, it's because strife is allowed to remain and it's a part of just what is told. Now, watch this. It's going to be challenging because there are times when you have a right to act out or you have a right to do things to people because you just got the power to do it. I was reading last week or, or teaching on Uplift on, on Friday how David, who was the gifted one that was brought into the house of Saul to play his evil spirit off him. When he was confused, when he had problems, David was gifted enough to come in and skilled enough to bring and soothe his problem. But as a consequence, Saul, having an evil spirit, decided that he was going to try an assassination attempt on David's life. We know it. If we go into scripture and we read this, it's very powerful. The 18th chapter of 1 Samuel, read it. Uh, when, when the Bible says that, uh, that that, that Saul had a javelin in his hand and he had uh, uh, decided that I'm going to pin David to the wall. Now, the scripture says that David escaped again. In other words, it's saying that this was not the first attempt. This was not the first attempt of Saul on David's life. This was the second attempt. Now, watch this. Very important that I get this and I understand this. Why? 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 Because David had just fought Goliath. And one, can you imagine what he could have done to Saul? But his heart, the Bible says that he he operated wisely. And now the rest goes, uh, 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 the rest is history. Because he obeyed what God said, he goes down in history as the greatest. Here it is. Uh, uh, your history is ready to be written if you follow God's instruction. If you don't get into something because you have the power to eliminate David after winning against Goliath, Saul was a piece of cake, but because of his order in God, because God told him he would avenge him of all his enemies, he followed the God route, and now his sister, even, even when you go into Genesis, I think it's a very powerful story there in the book of Genesis, uh, chapter number 13, 
Abraham has gotten a blessing from God. Chapter 12, he gets the blessings of God. And now, as a consequence of the blessings of God, he is moving into new territories, and he decides to take his, his nephew Lot with him. It was just, just his nephew, his brother's son. But the Bible says that, that there was a moment that strife ar arose amongst the people. Here's what is interesting about Abraham's heart, because you cannot let strife rule your life because now you have gotten the blessing pronounced on your life. Abraham knew that the only way I lose the favor of God on my life if I allow strife to come and enter into my space. So in the book of Genesis 13, chapter 8, verse, I'm going to read what it said. It says, and Abraham said unto Lot, he didn't go to Lot and say, look, partner, I'm the one that's blessing you just on my ship. He didn't say, he said, he says unto Lot, let there be no strife. I pray thee between me and thee and between my herdsmen and thy herdsmen, and for we be brethren. And Abraham gives Lot the, the first pick of where he wanted to reside. He said, there's a land before us. You pick what you want and what you don't want, I take that. Why? Because I know I am favored with something. And wherever I go, I'm going to be blessed extremely. Those, that's what those of you got to understand. When God has favored your life, the only thing that can stop this is strife. And so the enemy is going to bring a moment for you to tell somebody, you don't know who I am. I No, no, no. You know that you're blessed. So if they want to be in strife and they want to be confused, you let them do what they're going to do. You say, I resign from this situation. I'm not. I'm not bringing this into my atmosphere. And sometimes you just got to make the decision. When people come with confusion, no, you keep doing what you're doing. I'm blessed. I'm going to go because it's more than one for me. This ain't the only one. Because if I follow God's instruction for my life, there's going to be several things that grow in my life. And it's going to be magnificent, the things that grow in my life. Now, I want to read this and I'm going to be done because my time, oh, I only got a few minutes. Genesis, don't let strife rule your life. It's going to be very difficult because this climate is saying that we need to be doing some things. We need to be taking care of some things. And I just need to be hating on some people because they hated on me. Here it is. Genesis, the sixth chapter, verses five and six. It says, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And he repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him to his heart. Why did this grieve God? Because I didn't make man to live in strife and to be angry and to be fighting all the time. I made him to have dominion in the earth and to live life and to replenish and have family and to do well. But notice what the text said. It says, and God saw that wickedness the wickedness of man was great in earth. Now watch this. Where and what produces wickedness? Understand what James says. Where there is strife. When strife is taught as a norm, you're going to find wickedness. When there's confusion in a community, it's because strife is allowed. In other words, you have a right now to be angry. You have a right to be spiteful. And now wickedness is produced because where strife is allowed to remain, the reason why God is urgently saying this is because so many are living in strife right now because of the pictures they have seen from something that happened in their past. And he says, if you're not careful, you're about to sabotage what God is trying to bless you with. And so he says, the wickedness was continually in the heart. Why was wickedness? This was not an accident. Now, there's sometimes people hit us at the right time and we react to it. But the Bible says that wickedness was continued. In other words, it was taught as a norm that this should be your reaction. You should always react like this. You should always have an act or a mindset of getting revenge on somebody. And that's not God's position for his people. Stay with me. I want to finish with this. I got a few minutes and I'm going to unpack this and I'm done. In the book of, 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 this is Genesis 6. This is the pre, before God decides that I am starting over with man. I am starting over with man. You know that God uh, instructed Noah to build an ark 
because he was about to start over because the wickedness of the hearts of men was uh, the imagination was continually wicked because strife had began to rise up and it was the normal thought pattern or it was the normal operations of men on earth to be in strife. And here it is, here it is, here it is. It's very important. God, God commissions Noah to build an ark. You know the story? He built the ark. But the Bible says, and I want to re reference uh, 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 Genesis chapter 10. I want to go to Genesis chapter 10, and I'm going to paraphrase, and I want you to see this because this is important because this paints a picture of our very presence and our present day. Uh, that was after the flood, and it talks about how Noah and his three sons come off the ark. Their wives, of course, uh, Sham, Ham, and Japheth. I want to particularly uh, specifically look at the lineage of Ham. Ham had a son uh, 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 named Cush. Cush had a son named Nimrod. This is very important because this paints a picture. Nimrod, as the scripture says, Genesis 10, was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Now, you got to understand this because you have to do the historical content of Nimrod and what his reasonings were. He he was a, uh, uh, the Bible says that he was a, uh, 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 a very uh, uh, skilled hunter. And, 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 and when you look at this picture, he was a, 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 a somewhat of a giant, a renowned man that looked like he could uh, actually carry the burden of people. And he presented himself like that. Here's what is important about this text. Here's Nimrod's issue. Nimrod had a problem because his ancestors had been killed by this God. He had a problem. And so, in other words, he is defiant against this God that allowed his ancestors to suffer from this plight. Stay with me. It's a picture right now. He, he, he had a problem. And so, since he was a man of statue, he was very aggressive, he could influence people to follow him. Now, Nimrod's uh, 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 instruction was, we're going to build a tower, a tall tower. The reasoning for this tower was that if this God who is angry ever decide that he's going to destroy my ancestors again, he won't be able to accomplish it because I'm going to, through my innovations, build a tower that is tall enough to escape the floods of this angry God. Now, his whole mission in life was to make sure that this angry God never, ever had the opportunity to do to his ancestors again in history that he, the thing that he had done for. Here it is. The Nimrod spirit is right now in the earth. There are so many right now that their mission in life because of faulty teaching and faulty ideas are, are rebelling against the very God that gave them life because they say through faulty teaching and faulty ideas that the, this God, if he was so loving, how would he allow what has happened to my ancestors in history? And so now I'm not in agreement with him. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come up with a system that I can prevent this. And I will have a system that people can believe in. And I will tell them, you believing in this God, but you really need to be believing in yourself. You really need to believe. And so if you read, now you can read this in, uh, uh, there's a historian named Josephus. You can go read this. This is, this is, this is vital information. You can go uh, uh, in the Antiquities of the Jews, uh, 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 book number one, chapter four. Go read this. This is the whole story of Nimrod. And so he says, I will not uh, give God credit for anything because he, what he done to my people. This very ideal is being bred into the mindset of believers' children, that you are believing and we're listening to outside forces to say, really, you don't believe in God? And after what he's that, only thing he's done is brought you into the moments of slavery, all that. That's why the enemy is, is, is pumping up the rhetoric right now, because he want to find believers that are in a very uh, a, 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 a weak moment because they are watching right now things that have happened in history and he want to push an idea so nimrod did the very thing he says we're gonna we're gonna build this tower in case this god is angry again he'll never be able to do that to us again and i don't want to hear nobody saying that they have skill and power because of god it's not because it's because of what i'm showing you how to do now follow my 
lead. And so they created this thing called brick and mortar because they wanted to build brick, which is a direct uh, 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 difference from God. God did everything with stone. They created brick and mortar. What is it? It's mortar that they put between the brick so that the water couldn't come through. This is in total defiance of what God said. Now, he says, I'm going to build a tower into the heavens. It wasn't building a tower up to God in heaven. The heavens, uh, according to them, they were uh, uh, masters of astrology and astrology, meaning I'm just going to build it high enough that when the waters, floods come again, this angry God that had caused my ancestors to go through a never ever be able to do that to us again. And I'm not going, I'm in total defiance of him. And I'm going to tell everybody that I talk to, you can believe in God if you want to, but I'm here to tell you, you better trust in yourself and you better trust in your own ability. So when I began to really study this scripture, the spirit of the Lord began to lead me to, to recognize that this is the same spirit that is happening now. Same one that is happening now. That's why people are not giving God credit any longer. They are ascribing their wealth and their innovation to their own knowledge. We did this ourselves. We, we did this for ourselves because we are strong and I'm so smart. Now watch this. Watch this. So what the scripture says that God, he says, let me go and examine. Interesting. Let me go and examine. Long story short, he goes down and he says, let me confuse the language. Because the whole idea of the tower was to make sure all of us, the same people, stay in the same place. Because I don't want to go, us to go outside of this. Stay right here. Watch this. And so God himself comes down and he confuse, watch this, their language. And it is thus called the Tower of Babel, where they babble because they are in confusion. Wherever strife is, confusion will reign. Stay with me because this is so important. So now the question that I ask myself in reading the text is how can uh, these men build brick and mortar and be so innovative without education. That's an interesting thing. Why? Because they were born with it. They were born. Now, Nimrod was a man that was great stature. Here is a, 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 a group of people, a race of people that were born strong in stature and they were innovative just by nature. They, were, they are inventing things. But what they are trying to invent is something to prevent something. And so God comes down and confused the language so that the work could not be completed. You better read this. So listen, a very skilled, a very strong people now can never work together because they cannot understand the same language because here it is. Here it is. They did not ascribe their abilities to God. They thought it was themselves. And watch this. The whole premise behind it was that to make sure that this angry God would not allow what he, to me, what he allowed to happen to my ancestors. Stay with me. So God had to confuse. Watch this. Because what Nimrod didn't understand was when his great grandfather came off the boat, Noah, God had already promised him that what has happened this time will never happen again anyway. And you're going to have to believe what I said and not believe or trust in your own ability to prevent. In other words, if you spend all of your time in prevention, you don't have the energy for invention. Thus it is today. All of our attention is spent in preventing, preventing, making sure that we prevent what happened to those that came before. God done already promised us that it would never happen again. He's already said. He says you need to be focused on inventing when you're so focused on preventing. It's because we don't understand the scripture. Because the enemy is showing us pictures that they're still doing it. He says, well, if you would come together with the information on one accord that you already serve a God that has already promised you, you are unstoppable. But when you try to get revenge yourself, it is easy for you to be plundered. This is the plight of 
I like, I wish I had more people on here to see this today. This is the very reason right now that so many people, so many people can be so incredibly talented and innovative, but it seems like never can we get together to work and the enemy will tell you it's because of them, it's because of what they've done. Never put the picture and say it's because of me. It's because of what I do, because the very time that we get together on one accord, what happens? We become unstoppable. But the very day it happens, we get into strife. The enemy always causes strife. At the very time, it's time for us to come together. Now, notice what it says. James said, I'm going to read it again. Here it is. James says, for where envy and strife is, there is confusion. Anytime confusion, confusion and every way envy and strife is, there's confusion and every evil work. Whenever confusion comes up, it's because strife has been allowed as a norm. Watch what it says, where there's envy and strife. Watch this. Envy is against your own kind. Strife is against other kinds. And that's what we are living. It's never me. It's always them. It's always this. It's always that. Because we allowed strife to rule our life. Because we got good reasons in this season to be mad at everybody because of what they've done. But this is a season that we will not be deceived. We're trusting God because this is the time of our divine intervention in the lives of so many that are listening on today. This is your finest hour. Don't let strife. Don't let strife deny you walking into your wealthy season. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you today for your word. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your continued blessing. Thank you for all the things that you have, have, have directed us in. We hear your word. We're getting back to your word. Lord, I thank you for the season of, 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 of abundance for those that are, are, are applying your direction. I thank you for this season of, 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 of great substance. I thank you. I thank you for allowing us to walk into that wealthy place. Thank you so much for us being able to overcome the confusion, the deception. Thank you so much for being our God, our Father. Thank you for having the power to forgive. Thank you for the not walking in strife. Thank you, Lord, for just hearing my cry, hearing my prayer. And I give your name, praise, honor, and glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you guys so much again for your tuning in today this is your finest hour i'm telling you this is your finest hour don't be deceived because of what you see this is your finest hour this is your finest hour this is your finest hour you will walk in everything that god from you won't let strife through your life you will not let you 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 will not let a people get under your skin enough where you think you got to retail retaliate no you're bigger than that there's, you got a, you got something in your view. Stay focused. Stay focused. Stay focused. Stay focused. Don't let people distract you. There are people coming for you. You know they are. When people are coming for you, they're coming because they see and recognize something in you. The scripture says again, we're envy and strife. There are people that are envious of you. That don't mean that you have to have strife against them because they recognize something in you. A lot of times what happens, people recognize something in you that they were never going to get. They just thought it they could get. They just thought they could get it because you make it look so easy. They think it's so easy because you've been gifted and graced of God to do it. They just think, oh, since he can do it or he he ain't no bad. Let them say what they want to say. You've been favored and graced of God to do what you do. You make it look easy. So they envy us because you make it look so easy. And now I tried it and it didn't work. So now I'm going to be mad at you because you made it look easy and I tried it and it didn't work. And you shouldn't be able to do it either since I can't do it. But you cannot lose focus on that. You cannot lose focus. Keep focus, stay focused on what God has promised you, and you will see results. You will see results. Nothing can stop you. 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 Nothing. I will end with that. Now go to my YouTube page, Pastor G, 
at Network of Believers. For those of you that are su su subscribed to my page, you know, last night I dropped a couple of videos in there. I need you to go to my YouTube page. There's some things that I just only drop for my YouTube subscribers. There's a video there, uh, for, uh, the, the Faith Declaration for 2019. It's inside my YouTube page. You can go there, subscribe to it, and you go, I'm, I'm, I'm about to drop some more inside there. So go there and watch that as well. Remember, this month mm -hmm. of February is our uh, month to give to Nathan Diamond. He's a young man that is challenged with autism right now that we believe that God is going to completely bring him and heal him. But in the meantime, there is money needed for his therapy. I believe that there's no, no young parenting, no, no young couple that's got a baby that is suffering from anything should not be able to give them the care needed because they don't have the finances to do so. I pray that you help me. Uh, uh, Pastor Deidre, if you can, stick that address in there once again, because I need this to happen. We need, our goal is $17,000. None of this money is coming to me. It goes straight to, to the parents of young Nathan. Go goes straight there. They are, group, they are family out of Atlanta, Georgia. This is just the beginning of some of the things that we're going to use this uplift to do. When I find causes that I think is worthy of it, we're going to go in. We're going to go in. That's part of what we do. That's part of what church is all about. That's a part of what ministry is all about, helping people in their time need. So if you will, Pastor DJ, stick the address in there, and I want you guys to go. No gift is too small. Definitely no gift is too large. You can give whatever. You can give whatever you desire to give. Be a blessing to them, and God is going to meet you in your time of need as well. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Jackie. Amen, Jackie. Uh, Troy Baker, thank you so much. Brenda, Junebug, it's really me. Acklin, Sean Crutchfield, Latoya Haney, thank you guys so much for tuning in today. Prophet Pam, thank you so much. Uh, Wanda August, thank you so much. The Ron Thomas, Rhonda, if you're still here, uh, I need you to uh, 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 inbox me. Uh, Deron Thomas. Pastor Deron Thomas, thank you so much. One of our sisters at, at Network of Believe. Raina, my mom, say travels to my mom. They're on their way back from Michigan. Thank you so much. Patricia Mills, thank you so much. Kimberly Hayes, thank you. Thank you. Jessica Edwards, thank you. James Absent, Pastor Nolan Brown, Shalanda Henrietta, Bishop Cedric Beard, uh, Mashuna, Mashana Cooney. Uh, Connolly, thank you so much. Vaughn Atkinson, thank you so much. Pastor Gilbert, thank you so much. Thank you guys so much uh, for your for listening today. The address is in there once again. Go give, go give, go give, go give, go give, go give. Thank you so much. Uh, I am out. This video will be up within the next uh, uh, 15 to 20 minutes. I have it up on YouTube. Thank you so much. Have the blessed day that you deserve. Pastor G., and Lady T, we are out of here on today. Blessings, blessings, blessings. Peace.